like Cher, but, but he's making her look like Cher. And she's looking like Cher? Yeah, so we're going to show the whole process coming. It's kind of amazing. The man who says, I want your face. David Starr made history in 1973 with his Hollywood celebrity makeovers. He was voted Best Makeup Artist in San Francisco by Harper's Bazaar and San Francisco Magazine and has the magic touch, as clients say, that will transform you into the star of your dreams. Good to see you. Thanks, Eric. It's really great to be here. You have had a very busy morning, haven't you? It's, it's been uh, fun. Busy and fun. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you first begin doing these type of things? You take somebody and just decide, well, I'm going to make you look like so-and-so? Well, you get busy looking a lot of faces, and one of the things that bothers me is when women get involved in over-the-counter makeups, they're more concerned about what color to put on rather than actually how they could enhance their appearance. So frequently, uh, like for example with Sia, she decided that she wanted to get into the business of modeling. And mm -hmm. so when she came to me, I said, well, do you know, I think that I could really make you look a little bit more like Cher, which would give you a better sell with the public. Well, let's take a look at a piece of video that we have. This Certainly. is the before shot of Sia Ray, who we're going to meet in a little bit. And uh, we transformed her into Cher today. And hopefully. And there are some similarities, but I've really never seen Cher without her makeup. So uh -huh. uh, there's some similarities, yet she doesn't really look like Cher. Well, first of all, she's a lot younger than Cher. Um, she doesn't have the same <laughs> lip line, and her, uh, her hairline is considerably different. So, you, obviously, you, it's hard to take a Toadie Fields-type character and turn her into Cher. Well, you know, reworking something, most people think that when you do somebody's makeup, you do it once, and if you really know what you're doing, then it's fine. You, you fine-tune it. You work it a few times. You see what's right, what's wrong. You learn, like, the nose contouring and whatnot. And if there's at all a similarity, like I've made a lot of people look like Diana Ross mm -hmm. and other celebrities, and margaret you know, and uh, what you do is you try to take a person and give them the general characteristic. Like, um, when we first worked with Donna Mills, everyone came to me and wanted to look like Donna Mills in the eye, so that's pretty easily transferable. Uh, by, uh, you know, just strong mm -hmm. eye contouring and whatnot. But when you do an entire face, the same thing can occur, but most people don't really believe that it's possible. Like when we were passing through the studio, someone said, oh, you could never do that for me. And I said, well, you know, if you have the desire, it can be done. It just takes a little bit of time. It's like learning any yeah. profession. Maybe we'll be able to see that. You started working on the hair we saw there. That right. was the first step? Yes. Um, her hair is pretty flat, and it's a little longer than Cher, so I felt that we needed to build up some volume. So the easiest way to do this, Eric, is to spray it and blow dry the spray and keep building it up and building it up and teasing it until we get a little bit of that. Okay, then you then, go to the face. Certainly. Then we do is she has freckles, and I wanted her to have a smoother complexion. She's also had a little problem with acne, so we start building up the cheekbones with a highlighter, then putting on the base, which I put on a lot of liquid base. Mm -hmm. Now, that allows the water to evaporate, and it gives you marvelous coverage. It doesn't give you a caked up effect, No, um, there's no oil in the base, really. It's sort of like using a pancake. You can apply a lot on, and as long as you absorb the water into the sponge, it just leaves the pigment in place, and it gives her a smooth sheen. And that's actually a very good observation. Most women make that mistake when they start putting on a base. They kind of rub it away rather than leaving the pigment in place and taking the vehicle or the water or the oil away. No, that's a big concern I've heard because a lot of women are afraid they're going to look like they work on 42nd Street in New York if they wear too much there's a, It's like there's a way to do everything and make it look nice. And uh, like when I do makeup lessons with women, it seems to be the hardest thing is to put the base on right. Okay, so we go from there and then we head toward the eyes. Mm -hmm. Eyes and eyebrows. Now, the eyebrows are a very interesting focal point because they will make what we call the radix stone, which means that the eyebrow should separate and guide the viewer's eye you to the see nose. see the transformation happening here. Eyebrows is something you really emphasize mm -hmm. with the eyes more than maybe mascara or anything else. Well, exactly. As we mature, the orbit around the eye looks rounder. What we want to do is have the eyebrow guide the viewer's eye down the side of the nose mm -hmm. so it gives you a much more youthful appearance. If you've got somebody who's got a very arched, round eye and they're mature and have bags around the eye, it's going to really emphasize that rather than making them look uh, youthful and fresh. And so you've e yeah, I was going to say, you've even said for men, eyebrow mm -hmm. shaping can be mm -hmm. extremely uh, mm -hmm. helpful. I think that it's interesting that with men, uh, you take an eyebrow and it's the key to the key to the face. Women have sort of overlooked this, believing that they tweeze the eyebrow to make more room for eyeshadow. Okay, now what are you doing with the lips here? Obviously some uh, liner on there. What we're trying to do with the lips is guide the outer edges upward. You'll notice that the vermilion or the, the lippy part of the lip is absent in Sia, so we have to build the upper edge of the lip so that you get a feeling of moving upward rather than letting the outer edges fall and guide the viewer's eye downward. 
So we keep building up, and then I use a secondary dark pencil so it makes it look more shadowed at the outside corner. And Sia is with us right now, and there she was earlier. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Allman, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> she was married to Greg Allman yes. for a little while. Does it amaze you to look at that, Sia? Yes, it does. Isn't this man wonderful? <laughs> I guess so. Uh, is this something you would aspire to? Had you always thought, maybe I kind of look like Cher, I like her look, mm -hmm. this is what I want? She's been my idol since the sixth grade, and I've always been told I look like her. I had the long, straight hair parted down the mm -hmm. middle. And then I went through phases of not looking like her at all. And very recently, I've been told it again. So I thought, well, hey, let's, let's make this work for me. That's incredible. And that's how I met David. And it's great. How mm -hmm. long do you, like, never want to wash your face again at this point? No, or? I love it. I absolutely love it when people stop me on the street and say I look like her. Or, oh, my God, Cher just walked by. I mean, it's, it's a yeah. great compliment. In fact, she's done so well with this that she's going to be moving to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And a couple of agencies are interested in signing her, mm -hmm. both as a Cher lookalike as well mm -hmm. as on her own uh, modeling characteristics. Now David's not going to be around for you all the time. Is it going to be easy enough for you to do this by yourself? I'm learning. You are <laughs> learning. There are <laughs> lessons to be learned. Have you ever been able to take a man mm -hmm. and make him up to look like somebody? Um, you can do that, but honestly, Eric, it's just not as interesting for me. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, it's okay. It, 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 loses a, it loses a little something in the translation. There's an artifice that you can apply to women that makes it easier. Like with men, you can do a, a beard or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's usually not as interesting. And there's uh, the same things that would typify a uh, male's appearance wouldn't be the same with women. I mean, like, um, if a man wants to look like Marlon Brando, we send him to the gym for a year or two. I mean, of course, Marlon Brando on the waterfront. I was going to say, or to the restaurant. I that's right. Year or it's two. one of the two. One of the two. Um, the toughest, anybody who you think would be maybe the greatest challenge to look like a celebrity, any particular celebrity? To look like her? Yeah. I mean, you could take somebody and you wanted to make them look like a particular celebrity. Anybody come to mind? You know, I, I would think any, you could do anyone. I mean, it's just, it's not that difficult. Uh, I could take anybody, I think, who had any type of relationship and make mm -hmm. them look great. It's uh, taking the people and make, making them see that they actually can look really great without pinks, purples, and reds. Okay. I just don't believe it. That's great. See you. Congratulations. Thank you look you. wonderful. David, congratulations <laughs> thank to you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for being here. here. See you. Thank you. Thank we'll you. be back in a moment. But I 